This is one of the main crash sites of Flight MH17 where the fuselage of the plane came down and the lack of grass and the disturbed earth here is one of the few signs of what happened. Then there is the memorial stone to Flight MH17 and the wording of it is overtly political because the pro-Russian authorities which control this territory describe the conflict in eastern Ukraine as a civil war. Ukraine rejects that and says this territory has been invaded by Russia. So from the very moment that Flight MH17 was shot down, killing all 298 people on board, the truth about what happened has been shrouded in propaganda and political point scoring. It was hard for Dutch and other foreign officials to reach the crash site. But now finally the Dutch Safety Board will publish its report. It will consider what caused the crash and look at the issue of civilian planes flying over conflict zones. It will consider why some relatives waited four days before the Dutch authorities confirmed their loved ones had died. And it will also report on whether those on board MH17 were conscious in the final moments. A separate criminal investigation is ongoing. Today's report will not look at who was responsible. On Russian TV, Russian officials criticise the investigators and blame Ukraine. And those who live by the crash site and watch, like Natalia, generally believe Moscow's version of events. The majority opinion among local residents is that a fighter jet was responsible and only Ukraine had fighter jets flying over here. We filmed the Dutch-led team digging up pieces of bone 10 months after the disaster, but they've been unable to find any trace of two of the victims on board. The relatives of the victims have waited so long for answers, but even before the report has been published, the Russian government has criticised the Dutch safety board, claiming that research by Russian experts has not been included. And remember, there's an even more politically sensitive criminal investigation and report due in a matter of months. Tom Burridge, BBC News, in eastern Ukraine.